to uh, kick off uh, now and um, a very warm welcome to all those who are on the on the Instagram handle with me at the moment and um, for those who don't know me my name is Dipali Narula and uh, I'm a life coach with expertise in relationships and uh, self-growth. Um, it gives me great pleasure to introduce this platform of uh, Sharp Conversations um, online with some very interesting personalities uh, from uh, diverse fields of art, culture, fashion, sports, wellness, um, music, politics and uh, more. And um, this is where we are going to have some very thrilling and inspiring uh, insight to greatness of some of these uh, admired in individuals that I will be uh, bringing on uh, sharp conversations. Now, you know, the whole idea is to speak to them, to understand about uh, how their lives have been so far, how have they reached, uh, you know, wherever they are in their lives and uh, uh, particularly now in uh, these trying times how are they what are those fascinating uh, beliefs and actions that they are really following to be able to uh, move ahead and uh, look at some greater possibilities so keep joining in when i make the announcement because we are going to uh, deconstruct stories of some of these very um, interesting talented uh, people amongst us, both established and upcoming. So um, I'm now going to, you know, bring on board, uh, I'm going to request uh, uh, my first guest today for a sharp conversations to be joining me. And uh, I can guarantee you that starting today, um, you know, these conversations are going to be a lot of, um, you know, while they'll be, they'll be learnings, uh, thought-provoking learnings, but it is also going to be about having a lot of uh, fun and laughter, break into some music and some shero shairi, etc. So um, we'll make it interesting, both in terms of learnings and in terms of generally having fun. So um, I call upon uh, Jyotika Jalani to join me now and... Um, take this conversation forward yeah so um, I'm soon going to be joined with my first guest of sharp conversations Jyotika Jalani how wonderful Jyotika Joe can you see me properly yes I can uh, may I request you to put your frame in such a way that yeah you you are yeah. Yes. Better. So welcome, my dear friend. Uh, we go a uh, long back with having known each other since the days of school. And friends, um, Jyotika is somebody I uh, look uh, upon as uh, very dynamic, very successful, and somebody very compassionate who believes uh, in uh, doing a lot for the sake of children and society at large while she's accomplishing so much for herself in life. She has led her life on her own terms, whether it is about being unconventional about education, getting married early, having children early, getting on to working with the World Bank and then ground up from there. And of course, then uh, starting her own state-of-the-art organization called Janvi India. So she grew up um, in the beautiful valley of Kashmir, and that's where she spent her childhood amongst, you know, amongst the, the we all know about Kashmir. And agar swarg kahi hai, to wo Kashmir mein hai, and that's where she spent her childhood um, uh, with a lot of purity and quality of Kashmir and uh, Kashmina. And that led her to give rise to her innate and creative sensibilities which shaped up in starting of Janvi India almost two decades ago. So that's a long time, uh, Jyotika. And of course, uh, she has been over the years uh, creating her own benchmarks, taking her brand uh, from uh, strength to strength, not only in India, but also internationally. She's been able to strike a chord with the global clients and 
craft specialists and uh, expanded her brand beautifully. So we, as we go along, we will chat up with her and find out how her experiences are really um, having dealt with people internationally. So Jyotika, before I um, commence our uh, you know, conversation, I am going to take you back a little bit and I want to understand, we will talk about your early childhood, your upbringing, and then of course we will move on to, um, importantly, how you have been discovering your peace and inspiration throughout these years. So let's hear it from you about your early years in life. And of course, I will also request you to touch upon Mr. Bilu Sethi your father, who made us extremely proud, and you must talk about him as well. So over to you, Jyotika. Well, thank you, Deepa. That was a, a bit of an overwhelming introduction. Um, uh, you know, you've taken me right back to school. Uh, I made my reconnect with uh, Deepa, one of my closest friends in school. Um, uh, as some of you know, not all, I was probably the only one who dropped out of school, uh, actually took the advantage of the 10 plus 2 system. Um, uh, and I left school at the age of 15. I had quite an um, incredible journey at school um, from being um, uh, uh, very mischievous, um, being a topper in a lot of subjects, loved every day at school. We were a band of six or seven girls and the rest of uh, the notorious boys in our class. But um, each day was, was a great day. But when um, somehow the uh, year uh, 10 came, I somehow um, decided that uh, uh, now it's time for me to move on. Maybe I grew up too soon. I don't know what exactly made me do it then. But I'm told um, a lot of stories by a lot of friends of mine that it, it was because of this and it was because of that. But when I think back, um, I really think I, I grew up too soon. And um, uh, my only taking back from this was that I wouldn't change anything in the last 57 years of my life. Um, uh, going back to, um, you know, leaving school, it was, it was quite a challenge because there was no vocation that I could have easily gone and, um, you know, uh, um, uh, taken courses or um, easily fallen into a, another system. Um, but I... But I did it, and uh, I joined a college called the Davos College of Commerce. And um, soon after that, uh, doing a year there, I joined the Taj Man Singh. I was one of the first employees there. Um, uh, soon after, I uh, joined the World Bank. Um, this was at the age of 18, and I spent 10 years with the World Bank, which was an amazing, amazing foundation for me. I had one of the most amazing bosses, Bim Bissell, who has been my mentor and been my um, guiding force right through. Um, so my, my very important, but at the same time, if you can get life to teach you, then nothing better than that. Um, we have had a great, great, uh, uh, you know, um, band of teachers at, at modern school, but uh, along with them, our journey with our, Friends have been great. Um, uh, after I left the World Bank, which unfortunately was because of a head injury, I'd have, by that time had had two children, uh, my lovely Kartike and Karishma. Um, uh, I, I decided that uh, I wanted to do something else. I uh, dabbled at a, um, I don't know whether many people remember this, but I'd opened a modeling, American modeling school called Barbizon. And, uh, um, and that was very successful too for a year. Um, but I uh, somehow felt that there was more that I had in me. And one day it was uh, uh, just pure luck, you know. I mean, when you're ready to do something different, I think luck favors one. And um, I was given an opportunity to do an exhibition in a remote place like Squaw Valley in Reno. And there I arrived with literally a bag full of pashminas. And the journey began from there. Um, so Jyotika, sorry, I'm going to just interrupt you here. I wanted to just quickly ask you that when you left school, I'm going to take you a little bit back. When you left school, did you feel, did you get any sort of a, because you, you, you decided to follow what your heart and mind said, was there any resistance from home? Was, was there any pressure from mom and dad? Just very quickly. Uh, I think there was a lot of pressure. My mother was uh, 
uh, uh, not happy about it at all. Uh, my, my, my father somehow felt that uh, he said, do what uh, you know you think is right. Um, just uh, three years, I mean, everybody in modern school remembers me as, as Savita and not Jyotika. Nobody remembers me as Jyotika. My mother changed my name at the age of 12. So I think the personality of Savita, which was a strong this thing, suddenly became Jyotika. And now yeah. I remember who changed uh, her life. And uh, people say, what's in a name? Well, here's what's in a name. It made me change my entire life. So there is a lot in a name. But I have always, I have always known you uh, being someone who would have certainly made it uh, in her life. And, you know, it also brings me to a quote of Lala Delia, which says that she remembered who she was and the game changed. You always knew who you were and you would have changed the game. So your journey, um, you know, after school, your job, and then, of course, also getting married early, having children early was, again, a great step. And after that, um, you, uh, you know, went ahead to after I, quitting your know. job at the World Bank and then uh, on board with your trip of your exhibition in the U.S. So there on uh, what happened? Tell us about it. So this was an exhibition. It was an exhibition for, uh, which we which I had, which was for Indian doctors. You know, these were Indian doctors who never really got a chance to shop. Uh, uh, they were spending a lot of time. Uh, you know, treating patients in the U.S., but um, it was uh, there were these um, big organizations called API and Amdana, and um, so this was an Amdana organization, and uh, there were 400 doctors, and all they did was shop because they got four days to get away from their homes, and there was a little conference happening, and I said, oh my God, it's so easy to sell a shawl, and uh, I literally uh, took the next flight back and then flew to Nepal, and that is where the Pushpina boom at that point was a big thing and this is way back at 1997, uh, 96 sorry, and, and I, I just was able to ride the wave. Um, but I wanted to do something different. I just didn't want to stick and just sell a shawl which was a traditional shawl. So I decided to do something very, very different and I wanted to take the Made in India label to international brands. I had the conviction. So there I was with my suitcase full of beautiful embroideries and I would land up at a um, Dior showroom or a, a Ferragamo showroom or a Armani showroom and it wasn't easy but I had the conviction that they would uh, buy from us and, and they did. So by the end of it I was supplying 18 brands and we didn't have Janvi at that point of time. There was, there was just uh, me uh, doing embroideries and, 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 and designing for them. So it, it, it really set a very high benchmark for me and whether it was a Christian Dior or a Chanel or a Louis Vuitton, any one of these brands, you know, and I, I from literally started from my son's bedroom, you know, this was, I sent Kartike away to study in England uh, when he was 30, and I started, uh, uh, you know, the, the workshop, I had four uh, karikas on the addas, and that's it. So, you know, wow. my, my lesson here was you can do anything if you Wonderful, mind. wonderful, um, uh, Jyotika. You know, when when uh, you um, start small and then you start becoming big and you grow bigger and bigger, uh, particularly when we talk about not only the domestic market, but also how you ventured internationally so early in your career, when you're so big, like I said, and you grow bigger, the challenges become bigger. So what were the kind of challenges that you really encountered when you went international, dealing with the people there, the brands, the, the outlets where today all your beautiful products uh, adorn their retail space? And, uh, of course, many celebrities today wear your, um, you know, your, your line of whether they're shawls or stoles and so many other things, both nationally and internationally. So tell me, what were your challenges like, really, when you were growing big? So the challenges were basically to keep to quality, to keep to commitment of time, and to be able to deliver what other people couldn't. So, you know, in a world that uh, we live in, you know, especially um, we Indians are so creative. But I think the sad part is that our karigars, you know, for me, I did not think a designer was necessary. I don't have a design background. So I, I would just give them the shawls. We would taco an adda and I would just, I could paint. I, 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 I used to paint in school. but that I was, know. I remember. Mm -hmm. 
So I would just paint and I would just draw butterflies and I said, come on, let's make butterflies because I love butterflies or let's make flowers. And, and, and I didn't want to make the traditional, um, uh, you know, Kashmiri shawl or shawl that somebody else wore. And that's what became trendsetters. So stores like Harrods and Bergdorf Goodman and Neiman Marcus's and all the stores in all over the world suddenly said, oh my God, what is this new thing that has been created? And, and that's why I, I managed to catch on with something brand new and something so different. But what happened one after the other was that the challenges of keeping to compliances, because I'm a, a, I have OCD and I have a real <laughs> order when it comes to quality. So I yeah. was time then. So that, I, that, that, that was very helpful. The challenge was to be able to, to train my people and to have, you know, SOPs and to, to be able to, I'm still struggling with that, you know, but, but to me, every challenge makes me stronger. You know, I, I never give up. For sure. And your, your organization has grown by leaps and bounds. And today you have an organization which has uh, perhaps more than 400 plus people. And uh, it is fantastic how you have, uh, you know, forged ahead in your career. And today you are a name to reckon with, uh, with the fashion and textile industry, with the the best of fashion designers of the country and the frontline, uh, uh, you know, buyers, the h &Is. So uh, how do you manage to uh, work with your workers? How do you manage to keep them together? It's a tough task. I'm sure you have a great team, but talk about it. I can eat biryani with them on the floor right now. And that's <laughs> what I did. Yeah. It started and even now. You know, for me, I have close to about 350 Muslim workers. And that was a challenge because at every stage, you know, it's a, but for me, you know, when I go hug each worker of mine. I don't think there's a divide between any of us, not because they are men and I, I'm a woman, um, not because of caste, no. But the great thing is that I think for me, we're all humans and uh, it's not easy as a woman to be leading them a yes. pack of, of men we are basically male dominated. We have, I may be having 30 women workers, but I, I love the fact that they all believe in me and, and they all believe in my vision, you know, so that, 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 that's, that's really amazing. We, we've kept small, we could have become much bigger. We could have done the mass market, but we kept to the luxury market. So when I opened my first store, when Emporio, um, the mall opened, um, it was, you know, with a bit of push from my uh, husband and my son. And they said, listen, you can do retail. And I said, I don't understand retail. But we started selling, you know, and um, today we have five of our own stores and we are in about 200 stores internationally under Janvi. 200 stores, yeah? Okay, so my figures were are slightly incorrect. So that's wonderful. And uh, where are your stores in uh, uh, some of the major cities that you can uh, tell us about? Our own stores are basically, we are uh, in Delhi, we are in, um, uh, in Emporio, we are in Chanakya. We also have our store at the Lodi Hotel. We opened a store in Jaipur and um, our next store is opening in Gurgaon at the Koram. So we're just lovely come to open. And, 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 that and sometime back, sometime back you were in Paris. So I'm, I'm uh, only trying to uh, gauge that. Uh, are you already there or are you reaching there? Um, so how is it uh, working out? Yeah. Yeah. Without for, uh, without yeah one, for the not yet. But uh, these are our own own stores and uh, they are our own, uh, you know, we're, we're controlling them ourselves. The rest of the stores that we are in are basically, so we're at Bergdorf Goodman, we're at all the Neiman Marcuses, we're at Saks Fifth Avenue, we've been at, you know, of course, Selfridges, Harrods, uh, Liberty, um, all the Phoenix, and then we're in country like Lane Crawford and side. Um, this is going to happen in uh, the next two months. My son is taking care of that. And we've got a young, very dynamic, um, uh, you know, uh, a team of people. Yuv Bharat Ram has just joined us, who's a very, very dynamic young kid. And he's, he's putting this together with uh, the team. And um, that's one way of our going ahead. I've got a really, really lovely, fantastic executive team. I mean, I love my team. Um, uh, got a lovely girl. In fact, one of our school friends, Manu uh, Kapoor's daughter, Sanchi um, uh, Kapoor works with me and she has been responsible a lot for my, uh, for our Instagram, of course, under the guidance of uh, my lovely daughter, Karishma Tanani, who's a film director. Um, lovely. We'll talk about the children later. 
but uh, th that's that's something which has been fantastic and um, so these kids are now you know really pushing me it's a new age and i'm 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 hoping that i can retire and go back into my chanting space but um, uh, uh, i think i'm not really worried i'm not worried because i think it's a short short lived uh, disturbance you know the, the the world needed some healing uh, the animal kingdom needed to come out and you know live a little better um i i i just think uh, covid is uh, it, it's it's been very very destructive but i think it's it, it's for the better eventually of, of so that's wonderful to really know because somebody like you who's actually um you know into business with the international market besides being present in india to be talking uh, and feeling so encouraged about whatever is going to happen and not let your spirits down because i think it is really important to adapt yourself and start finding out what are the other ways and means of really looking at going a way forward so um and and let me tell you nobody is uh, going to let you retire that soon i mean this is really not the time because uh like we uh, have firmly believed uh, you know my mentor says that um, very often that as you grow older your experience and your agility of mind and your creativity of mind cannot let you um, really uh, retire unless of course there is uh, some physical problem that comes up so there I, is no question that somebody like you would retire <laughs> i don't think i'll ever retire till till my yeah, yeah. my retirement would mean um i taking a little di different course because i just feel that uh, there's a lot that i've done in the last 23 years with janvi 22 23 years um i i want to get into something a little more um uh, i would say important with my time and i just feel the younger generation in my company um my son as well i think it's time to you know hand them the baton and guide them um but so i'm a workaholic i work 18 hours a day um so uh, uh, it, the only time i don't work is when i'm sleeping so it's it, it, it's which is which is the reason, which is yeah which is the reason why we see where janvi india is uh, you know it it has to have that kind of commitment and that kind of force and weight behind it when there is somebody like you behind it really and uh, tell me something um uh, jyotika how has you know uh, what are the kind of beliefs that you have broadly uh, followed you've mentioned a couple of things but broadly what are those beliefs that you really follow and who have your who have been your belief follow and who have your who have been your mentors uh, besides your parents in your life whom have you been really influenced by in your journey of life and you know what has led to you discovering peace and inspiration okay so i'll start with my parents my mother has been a very 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 strong and a very very uh, motivating uh, person and she's an incredible lady at 84 um even today she will want to dress up and wear the best and even though she's had a, a difficult life losing her husband um, uh, at the age of 43 and three unmarried daughters and it, it was a tough journey for her but you know she is really really a woman of grit and a woman of a lot of lot of lot of lot of uh, i would say persistence and 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 a lot of she's a very intelligent lady she's very well read she's a poet she sings beautifully even today when the lockdowns there she does not miss her um her, her singing lesson um you know she does it online with her uh, with her guru and i think it's amazing you know at 84 who who sees that she had almost stopped walking she had stopped i mean it, it's just been an amazing amazing uh, person to see um my father of course was india's number one golfer at 50 he passed away um an amazing amazing guy again um i think he taught me one thing that never give up uh, uh i remember we would go and we'd say can we learn how to play golf and it's okay hit 50 balls and every ball has to be identical and i'm like okay sure. dad this is not for me so sure. i never became a good golfer i have a younger sister who's um uh, you know about 3 years younger than me and rithika is doing a great job even at this age playing a great game of golf so both my parents were very very open and they were very very permissive but we were never ever taking advantage of their being liberal with us but at the same time they were guiding us from a distance um as i said uh, you know my life took a very very unusual course uh, different from most people i don't think many people have their names changed or leave school at the age of 15 um and i always decided what i wanted to do and 
uh, I think it's taken me many years before I could decide that I wanted to um, take the responsibility myself for whatever happened. So today I think I can, and I cannot blame anybody or blame any situation. Um, having said that, along my line and along the line of my life, I've always found somebody uh, who's been like a roadmap. And I would always call a guru a roadmap. You know, like I would, I found whether it was Sadhguru at some point of time in my life, um, uh, Shri Shri Ravi Shankarji, who has been great. He, uh, Guruji always laughs and I just find that laughter being so childlike and so amazing. Um, and like this, you know, I've done courses in just about anything and everything. One would just wonder, like, my, my husband would say, like, what are you learning from all of this? And I'd say, I don't know, something, there's some taking back. But um, today what I've realized is that the most important thing that I've learned is that I have to love myself, you know, and I didn't love myself. I was very harsh on myself and chanting. I became a Buddhist um, last year and my ability to be able to chant for six hours during the lockdown taught me a lot. So uh, Buddhism, I think, is probably the closest. And I think because it, it's, you're not proving anything to anybody. You're just doing something by going inward by actually coming outward, you know. So it's, it's, it's been a very, very um, enriching journey. And I just feel that this has been uh, a great, at the moment, I'm also doing a 21-day uh, uh, meditation course with Deepak Chopra. I keep trying out things, you know, whatever, um, uh, whatever, uh, you know, resonates with me. And I believe in only one thing. Eventually, it's all about energy. It's your positive thought process that takes you through life, you know. And I am a very positive person. I mean, I've been through trials, tribulations, like all of us have. Um, but we have to go through life. So tell me, um, what are your thoughts on when we say that pain can be motivating? So in your case, um, when you encountered pain, when you encountered challenges, um, what kept you motivating? Because uh, was there any time in life where you thought that you would want to quit or step back during your professional journey and otherwise? So uh, I, what kept you motivating? I think pain actually made me feel that I had to come back and fight it more. Because I just feel pain is part of the journey of life. You know, there, when there is a thorn, there will be a, maybe not necessarily a, 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 a rose, but with every rose, there will be a thorn. So I think the pain that we call pain is again, uh, something that we bring about a lot. We are responsible for a lot of our own actions because we are in a state of mind where we are attracting it. I believe in the power of manifestation a lot. I keep telling everybody this. I think we really, really need to understand if we manifest our thoughts as being, this is not paining me. It's like, I've got a bad hurt. How much is my pressure of pain versus yours, Deepa? Will be judged by whom? Only us, you know? So I think pain absolutely. is part of the journey. Yeah, because yes, I, absolutely. And we all have to, yeah, we all have to. And, and, and it's like, um, like I always say, life is all about um, an ocean with its own waves of ups and downs and it's all about how we really handle these challenges these pains that come our way and we you know come out as a, as a winner and uh, so how much of uh, meditation do you do otherwise you're doing a course at the moment but you do you do you normally meditate what kind of affirmations do you normally uh, you know keep telling yourself how do you you know work on yourself your mindset Okay, so for the last year, I've, one year I've been chanting. Um, truly, I wasn't chanting more than 15 minutes a day because I did not uh, relate to it. But in the uh, lockdown, I found myself chanting up to about four or five hours a day. I found mm -hmm. that it. Um, I'm not saying it's necessary. It just depended on what I wanted to do. I think um, what I find that a 15 or 20 minute sitting in silence has given me a lot of inner strength. It's been given, it's given me a reason to be able to plan my day. I'm a very erratic person. I go by what I feel. So nothing is planned. Now I've decided to plan things so that I'm a little less erratic. Um, my daughter told somebody that, you know, whatever, uh, 
you know what um, uh, um, ma'am thinks about write it down because in 10 minutes she'll have forgotten it and then she'll suddenly say she wants to do it but i keep getting these ideas and these thoughts i get a lot of uh, power you know and I, you know there 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 is uh, a lot of power that i get from the universe so whatever energy i get i pick up good bad okay lovely so tell me uh, uh, quickly what what is uh, you know we are all in a bizarre uh, time with these unprecedented times that we are facing what is it that you would like to tell people in terms of being able to really take charge of themselves during this time so i just feel the most important thing uh, and my advice to everybody is that start loving yourself start being kind to yourself first you know and also start understanding that we all have our limitations and stop judging people stop judging everybody around you uh, once you start doing that you'll start creating a thing maybe uh, becoming a little more disciplined because with discipline we tend to create a little bit of a a, a, a better life for ourselves so for i sure. these are these are uh, um, some important decisions and do whatever makes you feel happy you know so if meditation is something that works for you like i'm right now i'm getting my entire core team with 30 of us we're all meditating um and some of them are loving it i'm sure some of them want to leave and i've told them if you want to leave the group leave it but but uh, try and stick with it you know how are you trying to hold on to your workforce about 400 of them how are you trying to uh, you know keep them uh, aligned with the situation and uh, you know how are, how are you trying to make it hopeful for them so one thing is of course by keeping them by paying them okay secondly uh, is that they love the company and they know they're not running away anywhere uh, for anywhere you know to get other jobs because they've been with me sure. for 20 plus years some of them sure. um the sure. third thing is that by giving them hope fortunately we haven't had very many cancellations of any orders so they all know calm hai you know so that is a big thing and i'm telling them that koi kuch bhi nahi you know we will we will create the work and we will we will go forward you know so we're giving that hope if if i'm positive then everybody will be positive so three quick takeaways that you would want to say very quickly three takeaways takeaways from this conversation and uh, no and your life what is what is it that you would like to uh, sum it up with some Never three key up. points never give up um that would be the number one uh, number two is um love yourself and the third thing i would say is be in a space where you can do what you can um i would say consistently keep doing you know sure. don't yeah sure be consistent with whatever you're doing this would be definitely and don't be scared of covid the most important thing don't be scared of covid there's some so many uh yes. things that are going on don't be fearful that 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 would be the most important thing don't be fearful that is that is so well said because i think people have to stop fearing it really because you know fearing it means um, not being able to think not being able to progress not being able to find creative solutions really is there anything else jyotika that you may want to share with the viewers that um, you may want to talk about well all i want to say at the end is that i have a beautiful family i have a beautiful team i have beautiful two beautiful children my daughter has been an amazing amazing companion and actually uh, uh, one of my biggest biggest um, inspirations um, she's become a fantastic filmmaker uh, karishma does not take enough uh, credit for who she is she made a beautiful film that we actually did the uniform it's today and for everybody believe in yourself you know and today i am the proud uh, grandmother of my baby jahan and baby jahan is my life um, how nice how jahan, nice you know i always wanted to uh, have another j in my life so it's jyotika jalani janvi and now it's uh, 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 jahan So hopefully and 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 Jahan has the has one of the most beautiful and gorgeous and a vibrant grandmother really thank you so much deepa you've so, been an amazing 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 um i don't even know what to say you've been an amazing friend all my life and um you know i think you've had your ups and your downs and whatever but you've always smiled and to become a life coach today 
is only because you've seen everything up and down and you've been able to come through so beautifully. So I think this is a great thing that you started and I'm, I feel honored to be the first one to be on your podcast. Thank you so much. Thanks, Jyotika. And uh, in fact, I, when, when we spoke about it and I was talking to so many people, I said, no, I have to first begin with one of my most deserving school friend. And that's how I reached out to you. And I'm so glad that I spoken to you and you know you are the one who has started it you've been uh, you've been you know you've been triumphant in life and you have forged ahead so beautifully in life um just like uh, the river ganga and that's where your uh, the name gets derived uh, janvi yes. yeah so yes. fantastic uh, joe and i just keep wishing you all the very best in life and i hope you keep uh scaling to greater heights and um keep doing whatever you are doing so beautifully well and uh, you know keep forging ahead so thank, thank you so much for being with me and we will uh, you know catch up soon as soon as uh, times are better yeah okay thanks so much yeah thank you lots of love bye bye thank you so thank you so much Thank you sorry I'm sorry thank everybody who joined us today and I please yes I was going to do that why don't you do that yourself first okay i'd like to just thank everybody who was on the on the chat with us i know it's not easy to be uh, on one of these uh, uh, platforms but thank you very much I, i i was trying not to focus too much on the names that were coming up on on the left side but thank you very much and and i'd also like to just um finish by thanking my husband sandeep who was also i never knew him in school but i've been married to him for uh uh 37 years and uh, he was a great great um i would say support all my life you know so thank you sandeep wonderful and with jyotika i'm going to be saying thank you also to all the viewers for being able to log on and be with us with so much happening really online i'm so happy to have seen so many of our friends and so many new people on the handle um and just keep tuning in because uh I'm going to continue this journey with a lot of learning and a lot of fun. So thank you, Joe, and we will catch you soon. Thank you, everybody. Bye bye. I finish with Namio Horenge Kyo. Namio Horenge Kyo. Thank you. Thank you.